Welcome to literary and jury charge practice. Let's get started with a little story from my Mr. Rogers book. Ready? A few years ago, I was asked to be part of a White House meeting about children and television. Many broadcasters from all over the country were there. During my speech, I asked the audience to spend one minute thinking of someone who'd made a difference in the person they'd become. As I was leaving that enormous room, I heard something from one of the military guards who was all dressed up in white and gold, looking like a statue. I heard him whisper, Thanks, Mr. Rogers. So I went over to him and noticed his eyes were moist, and he said, Well, sir, as I listened to you today, I started to remember my grandfather's brother. I haven't thought about him in years. I was only seven when he died, but just before that, he gave me his favorite fishing rod. I've just been thinking, maybe that's why I like fishing so much and why I like to show the kids in my neighborhood all about it. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the major reason for my going to Washington that day was that military guard and nourishing the memory of his great uncle. What marvelous mysteries we're privileged to be part of. Why would that young man be assigned to guard that particular room on that particular day? Slender threads like that weave this complex fabric of our life together. Let's do some little jury charge practice. A, a little jury charge practice. <laughs> All righty. And here we go. For this reason, we say that a person must be read his rights. Individuals are informed of the right to an attorney and the right to remain silent, which are the rights that individuals must be informed of according to the court case involving an individual named Miranda. According to the Miranda court decision, the right to remain silent is a constitutional right 
of which a person must be informed at the time of arrest. It does not matter that the person may know his rights. He still must be informed of this right and the right to an attorney. These are the two rights of the many rights that are set forth in the Constitution that must be told to the individual who is being taken in for questioning and possible arrest. The right to an attorney is the second important right that must be disclosed to the individual. The individual should know that any questioning that is being done should not be done without an attorney present if the individual so wishes. When a person is read his constitutional rights according to the Miranda decision, he is said to be Mirandized. A person must be Mirandized or the state will not have a case. A person must be Mirandized or read the rights of which he must be informed according to the Miranda court decision. If a question occurs as to whether a person has been Mirandized, then it is possible that even if a good case exists against the defendant, the case will be dropped. So some words you might want to practice. Mirandized. Mirandized. Miranda. Miranda court decision. Constitutional, constitutional rights, all right, so let's read now a little bit of literary material from our our article about reading your notes to increasing to increase your speed by margie wakeman wells okay here we go you can be in any position to read notes at the end of a long day at your computer at work, at the end of a practice session on your machine, you can tip back in the easy chair or lie down to read your notes. You are practicing at all times. Be aware of saving good sets of notes to read. At the end of a practice session, the teacher often slows down and does a take one time for control. Save those notes. Never save notes where you have major and many drops. They won't serve you well for reading purposes. 
save notes from all sources, jury charge, medical, technical, literary, congressional, Q&A, a little too fast, just right, falling off the log, slow. They can be from live classes, recorded material, or straight copy practice. They just need to be notes without frequent multiple drops. Back to our to our jury charge. one has words like intoxicated intoxicated we had jaywalking juvenile correction facility Right, here we go. The difference between juvenile court and the regular court that the adult is heard before is that in juvenile court, there is no jury. Under these circumstances, the individual was tried as an adult and had the right to be heard in front of a jury. In the case of a juvenile, the individual is not heard before a jury. It is for the protection of the individual. In this case, the juvenile was tried as an adult. In some areas, the offense of jaywalking is decriminalized. In this case, it was not. In this case, the juvenile was the one who had caused the accident that resulted in an individual being killed. In this case, the juvenile was treated as an adult and tried in court. In this case, the juvenile in question came before a judge and jury who heard the case he was tried in front of a jury because he was treated as an adult. The police are trained, as in the case of an adult, to inform the juvenile that he has certain rights that are granted to him or her according to the Constitution of the United States. The police treat the individual in much the same way as they would an adult. Okay, 
we had decriminalized, decriminalized constitution. And then jaywalking, juvenile. All righty. Let's see if I have something nice for Mr. Rogers. When I was a boy, one of my closest neighbors was Mama Belle Frampton. She was my grandmother's age and she loved children. She not only had a front porch, she had a back porch that led right to her kitchen. Each time I needed a treat, I'd knock on her door and she'd welcome me. Come for toast sticks, Freddy. She knew me well. I would have been about five or six when Mama Bell asked if I would like her to show me how to make my own toast sticks. Well, that was quite a day. She let me put the bread in the toaster and the butter and jam on the toast and she even let me, ever so carefully, cut the toast into four long sticks. Seems like a simple thing, but 65 years later, I can still feel it that neighbors trust and my own pride at having made those first ones on my own. When I hear, love your neighbor as yourself, I often think of Mama Belle because I think she really did love me. She just somehow sensed what I needed in order to grow. All right, let's do this, this short, short jury chart, very short jury chart. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in a few moments, the case will be turned over to you so that you may begin your deliberations. It will be up to you to find, based on the evidence, whether the plaintiff has proved the crime of assault and battery beyond a reasonable doubt. On behalf of the prosecution, the prosecutor 
has presented evidence that is intended to show the guilt of the defendant and on behalf of the defense the counselor has brought testimony to show the innocence of the defendant by his remarks he has stated that it was the negligence of the plaintiff that led to his injury remember it will be up to you to decide both the question of fact and the question of law in other words it will be up to you to indicate whether or not the indictment is in error and the defendant's cause of action was that of a prudent person you have seen the original of the police report you have heard the officer who wrote the police report testify now you must review the evidence and arrive at your verdict the allegation alleged is a serious one as a matter of law do not forget that the burden of proof is on the plaintiff Alrighty, well, thank you. That will conclude our literary and jury charge practice.